Good morning, everyone, and good afternoon and good evening, depending upon where you are uh, watching today from the world. Uh, so welcome to the Graphisoft Community Workflow Webinar Series, and this is episode number two. And for those that have not had the chance to meet me before, I'm your host, Nathan Hildebrandt. Now, today we have a guest, uh, Carol Arginski. He's a founder and CEO of BIM Factoria. Now, he today will be presenting on uh, point cloud workflows for Heritage BIM. Now, from my perspective, I look at the, the importance about sustainability across the globe and the importance of how we need to focus as architects on how we can reuse buildings. And from my perspective, looking at uh, workflows like this, this is going to become more of a norm as we move forward in our careers and how we actually capture and, and document existing assets to try and make better use of them in terms of adaptive reuse. Now, what's really important to note is I've had to pull Carol today kicking and screaming away from his Lego collection. Um, so he was really uh, in depth in building some Lego before I pulled him on to present today. So I don't wanna take up any further time. I wanna make sure that he has enough time to present and get back to his Lego today. But Carol, mate, thank you very much for your time today. And I really look forward to seeing your presentation. So take it away, Carol. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome and thank you, Nathan, for this uh, lovely introduction, specifically on the Lego part. Um, uh, <laughs> it's, it was um, it was colorful. Uh, so, um, hi everyone, my name is uh, Karol, uh, that's the easy part, uh, the, the surname is much more uh, problematic. Uh, so, um, basically today I will uh, showcase uh, some of the examples for those who never worked with, with point clouds and for those who uh, are already working with point clouds. Uh, uh, there will be different kind of uh, workflows and methods for you. Uh, to work out your files and projects, uh, but uh, I will try to focus on uh, the part of specifically the part of the um, organization uh, of the project and uh, what is important in those kind of uh, projects. So, um, so thank you. Uh, thank you for having me here and I will share my screen now, uh, which is here. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so, first of all, a couple of words about myself. Uh, I'm a CEO and founder of uh, BIM Factoria. We are specializing in specifically heritage uh, structures and, uh, and not only in surveying, but also uh, with uh, redesigning uh, and uh, rebuilding in a way. Um, I'm also uh, a part of uh, the point cap uh, family. We are uh, as a BIM Factoria master added value partner in Poland uh, where we train and specialize in the software. Uh, apart from the commercial work, I also do academia work. And uh, in this case, uh, I am a PhD candidate uh, and academic lecturer at Warsaw University of Technology, where I work on virtual modeling of architectural heritage building information modeling through accurate data integration and classification, so mostly open BIM and integration of it. Uh, con connecting to education uh, and spreading the world of BIM, uh, I uh, collaborate with Ziggurat uh, also as an academic lecturer uh, here about BIM implementation, CD, open BIM standards and practices. And uh, from that uh, place, I would like to say hi to my Polish friends uh, from Multibeam, uh, who is a Grabsoft partner in Poland. Uh, I'm, we are uh, working together and uh, in Multibeam, my role is to be a, as a BIM manager and also a tutor uh, on BIM software such as Architect, uh, Archicad. Uh, also, because open standards are close to my heart, I'm a member of Building Smart Polish chapter and uh, of uh, BIM Dictionary, where I co-create uh, a Polish version of a BIM Dictionary. Uh, so, what do we do in BIM Factoria? We special we deliver uh, high-quality heritage BIM documentation. In most cases, this is our main core of um, of. Um, 
work. And uh, the service is uh, quite comprehensive because it's not only uh, scanning and it's not only uh, you know modeling, but also uh, advising and um, you know being this kind of uh, um, organization body when it comes to uh, taking care of uh, digitizing heritage. Uh, we work on the newest technologies such as laser scanning, photogrammetry, and uh, and uh, all the structure for motion and RTK mo moduling. And also uh, we want to deliver experience and quality. And I hope you will see that uh, during this presentation. So <clears throat> a little bit of theory. We all know the survey of the past, I would say, because this is something that is still taking care uh, and still taking place, but it's not uh, something that it will uh, or have to always be uh, like that. Uh, there are newer methods. Of course, I'm not saying the, the old ones are uh, that bad. I'm saying they are uh, more and more uh, possible to be inaccurate than the newer methods of work, such as laser scanning. So in general, digitize, uh, digi digital capturing. Uh, so uh, how does laser scanning work uh, for those who uh, never work with scanners, for those who are new to the uh, media? Uh, so laser scanner, it's a tool. It's a geodetic tool which uh, works, uh, which scans, which uh, move the laser beam uh, throughout the uh, rotation of the scanner, as you can see here, and uh, it basically captures uh, all the points surrounding. So every single moment when the beam can jump uh, back and forth, that's the point taken, and it can be from uh, 100,000 to more uh, points uh, per one scan. Uh, so one scan is well one scan we can connect that into point cloud and uh, each of the position uh, can be stitched together with uh, specific points uh, like uh, for example here we have checkerboards or another uh, connection points and that will create a correct uh, representation of the cloud and here you can see a top view of the cloud of the site there are a couple of uh, buildings uh, uh, that uh, were scanned and here those uh, white dots those are positions where the scanners were um, positioned and uh, based on that you get the point cloud which is a 3d representation of the area uh, and uh, of course here it's decimated there are more and more points but uh, the whole idea is maybe i would just show a bit uh, faster uh, the whole idea is to have uh, this sort of um, um, representation, uh, very accurate uh, as it is state representation of uh, the general um, area. Yeah, so uh, that can be uh, done by uh, by you as a user or by geodetic team or us. <laughs> so uh, here you have another example. This is a mesh mo model already done uh, based on photogrammetry and it can be used. Uh, those kind of models can be used uh, as an assets in ARCHICAD library, for example, like GDL object, or it can be a whole area uh, which will be then uh, transferred into the um, into the modeling uh, uh, showcase. So, of course, you can use scanner uh, scanning in every single uh, state of the uh, BIM lifecycle of the design and of the asset itself. Uh, so uh, it's useful on every single step uh, from design through build uh, and operation uh, and also demolition uh, as well. So mostly to have um, saving different phases of your journey uh, with your design. Uh, what about Heritage BIM? Yeah, so <clears throat> here is uh, something that we adapted from British Heritage England, uh, CIC Construction Industry Council, uh, which really well explains uh, how the HBIM, Heritage or Historic BIM, can be used um, throughout the um, life cycle of the project. Uh, so it's not only uh, the things that we used to do with uh, typical newly designed buildings, but also a lot of uh, processes, mostly processes that are contained uh, uh, on, contained only in uh, this uh, like heritage or cultural heritage uh, area. So a uh, very important thing uh, is that we can go through the different steps. So we identify uh, the strategy of the, of the uh, like asset, how we do uh, around the asset, how do we work around it, 
uh, then we have to do a research. We determine some options of uh, reconstruction, maybe, uh, or restitution. We define detailed survey, uh, which is a very important step to uh, create a very good quality data set. And then we can determine based on that data, we can determine uh, later interventions. So at first we, of course, have to collect semantic data. So all of the documents around the building, basically, or the plot or whatever we are doing. Then we have a specific uh, survey workflow, which is uh, creating a point cloud and optimizing it. So basically creating a data that can be used in our software. So here is an explicit of the point cloud and that point cloud can be used for uh, model creation and that can be basic modeling profile and library parts creation also auto automation of some parts maybe with uh, connection of grasshopper and archicad and also adding any metadata to the model i would say this one uh, in case of the heritage is the crucial one uh, and that that is like the finalization of creation of a uh, model uh, and then a specific documentation so here you have the same specific um, cloud which was uh, implemented into archicad and based on that we were able to reconstruct uh, the wooden structure of the grange and here uh, you can see that uh, we also need to, the classification that i spoke about and then this data can be shared with other uh, users based on open bim standards so how it, this kind of digitalization should be done. So here's a case study of uh, Przysucha Synagogue uh, in Poland. And uh, here is uh, for you the graph how actually the process worked on. Uh, I will focus mostly on uh, this uh, processing, archiving and modeling today. But uh, of course, we acquired data first. We create a backup of that data. This is very important step. Always create a backup. Uh, processing happened uh, for us in uh, different softwares. I'm not speaking about registration, but about the, um, I mean, registration and uh, the um, going through the different types of files happened in uh, Point Cap Origins Pro and uh, Reality Capture, Reality Capture for photogrammetry data. And then archiving, by archiving, we meant also uh, creation of documentation archive. So all of the needed uh, sources for us for later on for modeling uh, can be um, imported uh, into the software and then through the specific plugin, which is delivered uh, with the software, um, can uh, we, uh, we can uh, automatically uh, input all of the views or all of the data that we created in the software and the software of choice that we use uh, I use personally for more than uh, 10 years <laughs> and uh, it's um, it's it's uh, Archicad uh, and also we use a little bit of Blender mostly for um, the uh, geometry that was uh, generated uh, from the cloud because it works quite well with uh, meshes then we could uh, move those meshes into GTL objects as library parts. Uh, and of course, exporting, we all know BIMX, uh, open BIM as IFC data sets and um, the documentation in 2D. Uh, but as I said, this is going to be our focus point today. So just really quickly about the um, case study itself. So um, there were two uh, data capturing uh, sessions. Of course, as I mentioned before, you need to search for semantic data at first. So any uh, resemblance, any uh, value, valid uh, information that you can uh, actually capture from the uh, from the you know from the world from archive uh, is uh, valuable. Uh, those things can be found in mostly in uh, archives in your uh, countries, so like historical archiving uh, systems uh, and so on and so forth, or uh, also publications, so any specific books. Of course, uh, uh, the um, my generation was uh, taught one simple task, Google it, so everything can be found today. Uh, and this is uh, this couldn't be found. This is the only drawing that was left uh, from 50s, from the survey that happened uh, uh, in 50s uh, in Warsaw University of Technology archiving, um, Polish archive uh, of uh, architecture. And uh, here, uh, that was the only um, resemblance of documentation, any sort of documentation which was uh, done by uh, architects. So, um, well, 
that wasn't enough, but of course, uh, based on that, uh, here you have the explicit from the model. Uh, and based on that, uh, we use this as um, like a um, uh, side by side comparison to uh, actually changes that happen in between those 70 years. Uh, so, of course, uh, we used um, those kind of digital tools uh, and those toys that we uh, all like. Uh, and here is uh, we scan with different types of scanner. In this case, we use Leica RTC 360 and also Leica blk to go as well as uh, Mavic Pro for, uh, for UAV for uh, creating uh, structure for motion data. And uh, all of that was combined at first. The registration happened in like a cyclone with uh, point cap origins. So uh, the all the imports of the data had to happen at first uh, to the proprietary file in uh, cyclone. And then we could move it to origins. So after registration, we got uh, all our reports. We also needed to move that to uh, reality capture. So the external scans uh, to connect with very good quality of uh, the uh, photos because uh, uh, cameras and scanners are not so uh, good enough for this kind of detail and uh, creating uh, you know, photogametry uh, mix and also uh, flying the drone is easier than you know uh, scanning the roof because uh, you get more data with it. So by combination of that uh, two da data sets, we are able to get a very precise uh, color map and also uh, all of that was in scale and it was useful in ArchiCAD. So uh, with uh, point cap, uh, we use this for uh, registration. So we were able to connect, uh, combine actually uh, the data from Leica and also the data from the drone. So it all could be meshed up into one uh, project. Uh, it works for beginners and advanced users. There are different versions. Uh, if you're interested, uh, you create automatically sections, views, elevations, whatever you want. Uh, you can vectorize cloud, you can export point cloud, you can decimate it. It's very detailed uh, for that kind of purpose. And also uh, what is nice about that two things, the, this first thing, there is a dedicated plugin for ArchiCAD to move all your data, which is very useful when you uh, handle huge projects. But not only that, I will show that on a small scale uh, project, how fast it is. And uh, it works on the Mac and Windows PC as ArchiCAD. So um, uh, so here you have a very important bit, uh, which uh, from my uh, perspective as a, a point cloud user and creator, uh, it's always the most frustrating thing. Uh, there are a lot of like uh, data banks like this uh, that uh, we have uh, in our uh, office where uh, we store all the projects and it's basically like uh, some of you might remember uh, floppy disks. Uh, so this is like a new floppy disks for us. So projects are huge. Uh, point cloud projects are huge. And um, to work it out in uh, different software, you have always move it back and forth. And in this case, uh, we focus on just releasing the main file. So like the, the raw data uh, from uh, Leica, for example, to point cap is, uh, origins and the project is smaller, uh, more than 11, 12 times than uh, the basic data, which is uh, quite a uh, relief for uh, hard drives and servers that we have. Uh, so how does it work? <clears throat> In very, very um, fast enough workflow, we operate on different sort of views and uh, with all of the uh, scans, all of the scanning positions that we uh, got, and of course, we can go through those scan positions. We can go through the pictures, so it's we do not lose data, even though it weights less. Uh, the main thing is we do not operate in 3D. That means like we do not, you know, fly through the uh, cloud. We can do that, as you can see here, but it is not uh, something that uh, it's um, quite useful in this kind of work, in my opinion. So uh, we uh, gather the most important thing for heritage uh, administration, which is the documentation, because in most cases, those uh, people working there, they do not uh, use computers that much still. It's, uh, it's not digitized uh, everywhere. It's in most cases uh, still an issue. Uh, so 
we create something in between to uh, connect both worlds, digital and uh, cultural heritage. And uh, we uh, decide to, uh, you know, digitize uh, the data because um, in the way of documentation, so all the sections, all the floor plans, all the uh, uh, elevations, uh, facades, uh, in, in other terms, that can be uh, organized in that manner. And then uh, we can move it uh, later to uh, documentation. So, for example, an Archicad by importing all the views and organizing them because they keep their um, XYZ coordinates uh, according to the uh, point cloud. So if we have a zero point in Archicad and zero point in point cap, uh, which are uh, similar, they will move back and forth. Uh, I will show that later. Uh, and of course, we can have other additional information on our models uh, that it's not only a, a flat, so to speak, documentation like orthophotos, but actually the uh, also the the model because this is the base to model your uh, your HBIM data set. So uh, based on that, we can create this kind of uh, documentation, which is uh, still quite useful. And uh, from administrative perspective, it is still needed to have. Uh, and also, um, we used uh, as uh, much di digitization as possible. So in other terms, we are able to uh, create, uh, for example, BIMX file, which contains all of the uh, what you saw. So the whole PDF, the, uh, the 3D model, and so on and so forth. So in that case, uh, for example, we go through the documentation and uh, if we click, of course, on the marker, if some of you do not know that, we can load uh, our documentation. But another thing which is uh, cool, uh, we can import all the orthophoto maps uh, as uh, collata files and save them as GDL objects. That means, this is like a tip, uh, that means uh, all of your views, which were 2D, can be also a 3D views. So that means you will see them. This is, of course, a PDF like a template, but in the back, you can see here uh, that uh, there's only a mass model, like very overall model. And then you have uh, all of the you know uh, documentation slices where you want them because they are automatically there uh, based on your um, based on your uh, workflows with uh, the cloud. So this is quite useful when you actually need to send out the information, not to uh, over exaggerate your modeling, yeah, because it might be a waste of time. Um, so <clears throat> that's that's one of the possibilities, of course. But uh, the most uh, sophisticated, I would say, is to model uh, very detailed uh, structures. Uh, but uh, I would like to uh, make a pause here because it all depends what do you need and uh, i would i wouldn't be myself i wouldn't mention standards and norms so uh, the one that you should be interested in about uh, after this webinar is the level of information need uh, which is uh, british standard now but it's uh, going international and basically it was mentioned first in ISO 19650 and uh, the purpose of it is to uh, really minimize and standardize all of the level of information, all of the level geometry. So it's going to be really uh, sophisticated in, in that term and, and also very easy to use. So what it is about, it's basically a couple of questions. Uh, the purpose of the information, so why we are doing it, delivery milestones, when we should deliver the information, the actors or parties, to whom we should deliver information and also uh, how and what. Uh, so uh, I just draw here by, um, you know, example, just to visualize that different levels. Uh, so it's like uh, uh, more into LOI and LOG uh, that we all know. But uh, if, um, of course, it can be interpreted by our own uh, like speciality. Here, I wanted to put also an emphasis that we need to uh, remember raw data and why am uh, why am i mentioning that it's strictly when it comes to uh, surveying but also specifically to cultural heritage um, all of the things that we draw all of the things that we model that we create automatically even like uh, maybe a segmentation and then uh, create automatic models 
um, based on the clouds are wrong. Uh, this is some kind of uh, approximation and it's always going to be. So maybe instead of having a lot of, you know, very detailed uh, geometry, maybe it's better to have a raw data as uh, containers, which Archicad can do really nicely in GDL and um, have a lot of information encoded into those uh, geometry parts. Yeah. So <clears throat> here's just an example of classification. Let's say we have IFC space and uh, uh, in the IFC space we will have uh, the period of the space, let's say, and we also have uh, the what kind of parts is, it contains, what kind of documentation with links. Yeah, we can have that as well. Uh, in other level, we can have, let's say, segmented uh, column, which is more in, in depth and detail. So we have a period. We can have uh, the question whether the element is authentic or not. I will show more about that in a second. And uh, other links may be linked to the semantic web uh, and, and all the libraries, semantic libraries, uh, which is mostly used by art historians, uh, culture, heritage uh, specialists, and so on and so forth. And going higher, we can get more and more of that information. And also about raw data, we can have additional info uh, like uh, what is the accuracy of the cloud? What is the segmentation? What is the scanner? And so on and so forth. And a uh, very nice uh, example, which I, uh, I based some uh, research on and also some work, uh, is a uh, standard done by uh, also by British, uh, so the UK Historic Environment Data Standard, it's called Midas Heritage. And in Midas, uh, you can have different kind of uh, levels. It's more on the building level, not the building parts level. But uh, with a little bit of tweaks, you can actually organize your own work to it and uh, you can create your own classification. In my opinion, this is the most important part of uh, every single uh, BIM model uh, which uh, works on heritage because that's uh, the I in BIM. Uh, I know it sounds like a slogan, but it is true. It's the most important part because then you are asked for, for example, a quick schedule of uh, your windows, which are dated, which are not, or which are uh, after renovations or which are not. In this case, for example, we have a Stuco uh, work and it was asked by art historians to uh, deliver. So we created a classification of authenticity and with uh, the uh, specialists uh, on the place, we gathered all the notes, all the information and say, hey, this element needs repairs. This one is authentic, this one is not. So all of that is, uh, I would say, the most important one. And we also added uh, links uh, to understand uh, the type of materials and so on and so forth. So here, a different approach, uh, more in depth uh, on the columns. So here you can see, um, sorry, mass modeling corresponding to the quality of building application. So maybe because you are doing uh, the building, maybe you are serving the building, maybe just a part of this building should be done in detail. Maybe you need only information about the you know, areas and what this uh, space contain and think about it as uh, folders on your OneDrive or Google Drive or whatever hard drive you have. Um, and in those folders, you have all the pictures of the, from the survey, the scan and, and all of the data contains of this specific uh, space. Yeah, so that can be also classified in uh, going uh, higher and higher with uh, detail. Uh, we have parts which can be good for a basic level of information need for mass modeling for uh, ar actually architect working already with the building to maybe do some concept analysis and so forth. Or we can go full detail uh, and even further. I'm going to show this one as a last um, as a last uh, explanatory uh, like uh, level. Uh, this is as a state of reality capture, and that's the most detailed um, possibility to, to have uh, your survey, your uh, inventory done uh, in depth. So, of course, I wouldn't be myself if I wouldn't mention open BIM standards. So uh, that's the most important. That's the most important. I don't know why my video didn't work. Now it's going to work. So that's the most important part. You can see different LOINs here. 
but uh, in this case we can also this is bim collab uh, zoom free version uh, you can uh, review your clouds without any issues so you click on the element of course you have all of the data uh, and also all of the uh, you know classifications that you created uh, in your model of course based on what you created uh, earlier uh, so <clears throat> without further ado i will go into live presentation and show different examples in archicad uh, to what i have so here uh, is the same synagogue it's a more sophisticated model more detailed one uh, so uh, we tend to uh, model too much sometimes uh, and uh, i will just show a couple of examples here you have uh, the examples of altars and those are meshes they were uh, actually moved through uh, blender first and then uh, decimated and created as uh, specific uh, objects so um, based on that <clears throat> of course we have also uh, like uh, column heads uh, in this case those are still meshes because sometimes we need to edit them and change them in some places but uh, when they finalize, we use them as GDL objects because meshes are very heavy. Uh, and uh, in I can hear my computer screaming already. And uh, in this case, you can see when, when you go here, of course, uh, from very close up, you see that it might be not so detailed, but actually on the drawing, it looks very, very nice. Uh, so it's also the approximation of what you need exactly, uh, what is important for you. So here, uh, the, the whole model is, uh, of course, done. Uh, I'm just going to cut out the 3D view, 3D cutout. So the whole model is done, uh, in, uh, was done in Archicad, uh, first 25, then moved to 26. Uh, we stopped there because we finalized the survey uh, after this. And uh, now, uh, as uh, far as we know, architects are using those uh, for um, for modeling uh, and, and designing purpose, because this is going to be as a museum and culture space for for people. Uh, so uh, the interesting thing I mentioned, uh, I mentioned information in the model, uh, and I'm going to stick to it uh, that this is the most important part in your uh, doings in your modeling. So uh, here I have the uh, the part of uh, the altar. And uh, those are different parts like beams, columns, uh, meshes, uh, profiles, and so on and so forth. So different methods. Uh, some of uh, people might think, oh, but it's not right. It should be modeled in different way. Yes, but we test a couple of methods and this was actually the most like beams, um, beams, columns, and profiles. Those are your best friends. <laughs> and in, in this case, uh, what happened is, uh, it all depends again on the purpose of what you are doing. In that case, uh, you can always change a classification and make it, uh, for example, uh, you know, like a building element. So it doesn't have to be uh, the beam, for example. And then in IFC, it's going to uh, be as it should be. But in Archicad, this is a specific tool that is very useful uh, in those um, in those type of modelings. But about modeling, uh, that's another story. And the uh, information is what I wanted to share with you. So let's say here we have, uh, you remember I showed the uh, slide where there was, uh, for example, uh, a lot of uh, information like here uh, about the element itself. Yeah, what, what is it exactly? Uh, it's all classification like done uh, preliminary uh, before. So we have our templates to specific type of projects. One are for synagogues, others are for churches, other uh, are for administrative uh, buildings. So they are like closed databases because they are very vast databases when it comes to heritage. And for example, architectural style, this can be written down uh, in other projects it can be choose from. So it all depends on how much information is inside of your project already. It's like with project info. The thing that you do at first, you have to uh, input the semantics at first in your project and you're good to go. It's it's perfect. That's why we love Archicad in this uh, regards that it's very fluent when it comes to databases. So uh, here I have this uh, this kind of uh, model done. And uh, of course, I would normally do something like uh, maybe a screenshot or a 3D document, and that would be like some kind of, you know, uh, saved uh, information. But 
we can do things better. So uh, because architects and art historians, we are mostly visual people, like we, we like to see things. So uh, we create uh, based on the classifications that we have, which probably all you know that are great for QA and QC uh, processes, but we also use that for HBIM. So in that case, we have, uh, this is an example, we have, uh, like I created a very uh, simple uh, case uh, where I have original elements, new items repaired, uh, items that needs repair and no classification. So no information about the heritage whatsoever. So uh, of course, if we go into management rule, this is very simple rule. So I took a classification and uh, in other cases, just different bits of the uh, properties that I created. So when I click OK, it's what I want. Yeah, so with Art Historian, we sit, we decided through uh, BCF or through whatever, because uh, we are lucky that uh, this guy that we worked with was open-minded and he wanted to uh, work with IFC. So we explained, and this is also a tip for you, never be worried to explain someone things uh, because they might uh, work in very nice way that you would like them to work and it will benefit both parties. So in this case, uh, we have this kind of classification uh, and uh, I can then create a 3D document, for example, like this. And uh, based on that, of course, uh, the lovely label tools where I click on the element, sorry, uh, here. Give it a second. I click on the element, of course, and then I can decide I would like to have uh, classification uh, property and I will choose the property like authenticity and I will know that okay this one is a newly designed item of course what I would do I would uh, normally uh, go into options and save it as favorites because uh, it's it's very useful to have your own favorites in that case and then you can move them in between uh, your designs and uh, and then of course uh, going for other, sorry, going for other. So it can be quickly done and, and you can get the most, like just for the drawing purpose, yeah? Or you can do a legend, whatever. It, it can be very uh, sophisticated drawing in that manner. Uh, but also there are, of course, uh, other things like uh, when we have uh, BIMX, uh, we can have uh, very nice uh, documentation based on that model. So it's not only uh, the documentation in 2D, as I shown before, but it can be whole set of data uh, and then exported. So everyone is happy. The conservatorship office is happy because it's getting a 2D documentation. Uh, we are happy because we have uh, standardized documentation uh, that we want uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, just to showcase one thing, in uh, in this model so here this view is kind of uh, nice because it's clearly for us which elements are in work which are not and uh, i would like for example because i know for a fact that all of the uh, the work the structural work on the um on my synagogue on the roof uh, it's all the the wooden structure it's all uh, done after it's not original so i can uh, use find and select so Google it in Archicad and uh, I can search for columns, beams that use only uh, structural wood. So I would get uh, all of those elements and you might see that uh, there are also, the, the roof itself is done with one of those elements and that's true. Uh, in this project, we used uh, the, the beams actually to have um, to have uh, those uh, roof structures because it was very nice uh, working uh, in the way of the profile that was very um, let's say similar so there were no disproportions the, the roof is quite new so if that would be more detailed we probably would do that with roofs or we would do that with uh, terrain with mesh and then uh, with uh, goodies, uh, we will change it to um, to roofs, which is very useful. Uh, so here, I'll just select beams 
and uh, or, or maybe columns just to showcase. Uh, so control A or command A and here classification. And this is the element. It's a column. It's in general, it's a column. And uh, I can go here to the heritage one. It's not original. It's a newly designed item. Yeah. So all of that will change automatically and I will get so you can easily work it out those kind of uh, graphs yourself. So this kind of visual uh, and also information um, uh, representation is very important. Uh, so <clears throat> that's all about that part. So just showcasing that there is a possibility to create a documentation, uh, a valid one, uh, and uh, of course, uh, the bit going from the scratch. So here's the point cap that you already saw. And this is on the smaller case. This is actually uh, just a random point cloud and a um, couple of things that you can do in between and how you can in fast way move data in between your, uh, your two softwares of choice, let's say. So here I have on the, sorry, on the left I have point cap, on the right I have Archicad. Uh, I tend to work with organizer, not navigator. It's uh, it, I, I'm kind of old people. Those who use Total Commander or Nor Norton Commander back in 20 days, 20 years old, 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, that was the software to use. And uh, so here I have those two kind of projects. Um, this uh, I will locate uh, in the specific zero point. So let's say this is going to be my zero point for the project. As you can see, I'm going in between views. Yeah, so I'm like applying that to the project, this kind of zero point. And uh, meanwhile, in Archicad, I have add on installed and I can uh, see, for example, uh, all my orthophotos here when they are created. So in that case, uh, I'm mostly spec saying about orthophotos because in my opinion, the best connection because uh, all of the BIM softwares are limited. Uh, Archicad is actually very well working with clouds uh, with XYZ and E57. But uh, the thing is that uh, if you want to work fast and sometimes you need to be on the go so you do not move your workstation and all of the stuff you have with you, but you have Ultrabook or MacBook or whatever, and uh, you want to have light documentation, but detailed documentation. So, for example, with uh, layout and section tool, I can create uh, specific uh, sections, let's say like this, and then I can have, um, of course, I can change whether it's uh, dense or, or with depth or not. So all of that can be set out. Uh, and also uh, I can uh, create some kind of um, floor plan, let's say. Very uh, not so thick. And then I can process all of that uh, if I need. And uh, other things like I can do work walkthroughs. Uh, I can uh, export all those um, points that are here. So for example, if I want to go into the picture, I can just see here you have one of the connection points that uh, you registered point cloud with, and uh, here's one of the pictures. So you can have this kind of documentation there. It can be in color, it can be in uh, uh, intensity, but in general, you see that we are getting all of the cuts that we wanted, yeah? An interesting thing is that you can also vectorize your clouds. So it's like with uh, Camera Raw and Photoshop, you have your histogram and you define, OK, wh what is cloud, what is not? And it will try to find you lines, and those are DWG lines, so you can move them, CAD lines, so you can move them uh, in Archicad. Uh, and uh, another thing, you can export, of course, the cloud itself. So I think that's the uh, most um, useful one. Uh, so in this case, uh, you can export whatever you want uh, like this. Let's say this is going to be a full scan point uh, and I will have another one, of course, in a nice format A57 and I can have another one which is going to be, let's say, 05. So that's going to be a little bit less dense here. So let's create those things. 
So nice thing is that in the meantime, I can work and I'm not bothered that uh, with loading screens and pro processing, it's, it's really nice. And um, now there is a button called for cat connect. I will click it and here. As you can see, it's synchronized, so uh, it's already connected. I know the connection is well established and I can see all my documentation that I created before. So uh, right now I would like to create all of the sections uh, to move them. So normally what do we do? We would open uh, the file menu. Sorry, uh, this is Teams and it has this kind of bar <laughs> that it's frustrating sometimes. So we would open file menu. And we would go through the interoperability through merge and import our uh, DWGs or, you know, through XREF, uh, through uh, placing uh, XREFs and so on, or external drawings, it's up to you, right? And it will be somewhere and it will be organized in our own uh, way, but there is another way that, uh, remember, you need to do that for every single drawing. And here you just uh, have, uh, let's say, all of the sections. Uh, you, that's going to be uh, the sheet name. It's basically what do we see? So it's uh, either it's a color. If it's scanned with different uh, type of data, it's going to be there. Uh, we can create new view. So in this case, new section. Uh, and then we have um, possibility to choose a layer or create a layer. So, so it all depends on us. And basically by clicking here, we create automatically those sections and they are moved here um, as I click. So uh, for example, for layout, I can uh, add it to stories and it's going to be uh, so, uh, seen when I create, it, uh, the, create a story or use a story. Uh, the same can be done for other views. Yeah, so all of that can be imported here. So I close it and right now, when I uh, go back to Archicad, <clears throat> let's say I open uh, ground floor and I open the layer that I have, it's going to be there already with all of the sections. So organization is the key here that you do not, you are not bothered with that and it's super fast. And so, so you get the most of your tool. And uh, what is nice, you're getting the full, um, you're getting full uh, view of the cloud. So this is not like uh, worse quality, decimated, and so on and so forth. And now what is nice, I can add, for example, a point cloud. And uh, that point cloud can be, uh, you know, varying. So you remember I exported two clouds. One was the full one, so two more than two gigabytes, and another one is like four megabytes. I will start with four megabytes. So it's now it's being transferred to LCF uh, library. And it will be here. So I will be placing it in the project origin. So it's all the same and you see it's all corresponding. So it's, it's very light and getting the full detail of what I have uh, on the cloud uh, on the, on the um, uh, orthophoto map. Yeah but I'm getting all the snap points that I need for this kind of project, yeah? So this is very uh, nice way to work. Uh, of course, uh, the good um, organization method is when you have, uh, let's say the object, this is basically on furniture, but we can have a new folder and have it like uh, outside data. And in that uh, folder, we can have, uh, for example, point cloud. I tend to work with extensions. I love extensions. And uh, in this case, all my layers will be named as uh, point clouds, but uh, one like or different extension will be there to organize it. Yeah. So putting it into the different cutting ones, so it's not interfering with anything. There are no additional actions in the background, so it's faster. And after it's being uh, imported here and also uh, you know where it should be, uh, then you can close the layer and of course create and organize uh, in a nice manner.
So uh, another thing which uh, I really like about that is when I'm, for example, on the ground floor and we all struggle with creating terrain and uh, this is uh, very fast. So I will just um, hide the cloud and we have some points of the terrain, let's say. So in ArchiCAD, I can work it out in two different ways. I can receive 3D points. So when I click, I will get the 3D point. In this case, I actually um, set it out as an armchair. Maybe it shouldn't be like this. Maybe it should be some kind of point. So it can be a, uh, a library object of your choice. Uh, so if I click again, I will get the chair. Yeah, so that's uh, that's something to think about. But here, let's say I will stop receiving points. And I will click very fast all the 3D points as geodetic uh, department would do. Yeah, they will go and they will uh, not scan, but they will uh, measure all the needed uh, like positions. Uh, for my uh, for my project, yeah. So I can get more of those points and something like that. So let's say I will get different kind of measures here. Okay, so I got all of those 3D points and now I can export those. So I can export uh, all of the information about those points. And in ArchiCAD, I will just go into the file menu and then into interoperability and click place mesh from server server yours data. So I'm choosing XYZ, choosing points, and I choose original location, and it's there. Yeah. So that's the beauty of it because we have all of the orthophotos, we have quickly a terrain, we have the full point cloud. And we have all the views that we know they will correspond with, with what we are creating in documentation. And all of that is nicely uh, organized in worksheets. So I mean the orthophotos. So if you need them uh, also here, they are separately here as uh, drawings imported. So this is quite uh, useful and uh, I would say um, fast way uh, that uh, works uh, pretty well in this organization manner. So combining uh, that approach and then modeling and then uh, data um, handling with uh, information, with classifications uh, is uh, then easy peasy, let's say. So one last uh, thing. Um, I would like to, of course, uh, thank Graphsoft for having me here. Uh, and uh, if you want to reach out, uh, you can reach out to me through email, uh, visit the website, or in Graphsoft community, you can find me on my name and surname here without Polish letters, so it's easier to uh, read uh, and write. So thank you very much uh, and uh, wishing you all a good day. Thanks very much, Carol, for that. Um, it's a topic from which we could go on for hours, right? And 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 my mistake thinking that we could cover off on this in in one session today, and you know you could go on for hours. But um, now's the time for uh, people that are here attending. I don't know how many of you your uh, minds are blown uh, by what you've just seen, or or whether or not you're actually doing these processes yourself. It'd actually be really interesting in the chat to see whether or not. Uh, you're actually currently working on heritage projects and, and then possibly even the processes that you may be using. But um, we only have about six minutes left, so I'd be really keen to see any questions that people have to put them in the chat right now so I can ask them of Carol before we have to close out the webinar for today. So Carol, thank you very much for your time today and putting together this informative presentation. Uh, as I said, as I started the q and I think we probably should have looked to do it over two sessions because there's just so much uh, rich information to take away from your session today. Um, for those that want to re-watch this, hopefully the team will have this uploaded into the community in the near future. Uh, we will be having our next workflow webinar or episode three uh, on the 14th of February. And hopefully within the coming weeks, we'll be able to announce our speaker for that next session.
but thank you very much for you taking the time to attend our webinar today. Hope there's something that you've been able to take out of it and uh, look forward to seeing you again in a month's time. So thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank guys. you very much, Nathan. Thank you all. Thank you, Graphsoft, for having me and uh, wishing you all the best and good week ahead.